Praise the Lord and God bless you again. We thank you for being with us for our 10 minute midday manner brought to you by Triumph Way of the Cross Church. We thank God for you uh, tuning in on today. Today, we're going to reach the conclusion of the book of 2 Corinthians as we are working through the letters of Paul. Amen. Uh, today, starting with 2 Corinthians chapter number 13, it's coming right up. Amen. We thank God for you uh, being with us on today. Amen. We thank God for his grace and his mercy. We thank God for all of the great things that he has done in our lives. Amen. Amen. Uh, today we're continuing in the book of 2 Corinthians. We're going to conclude with 2 Corinthians 13. Amen. And we thank God for you today. We're, if you're just picking us up, we are going through the letters of Paul chronologically now. Amen. But this is 10 minute midday manner, 10 minutes into the word of God to bless your day on your lunch hour. We do post on Tuesdays and Thursdays during lunch, but you can catch us uh, by logging into our websites, logging into our social media platforms. You can catch us anytime that's convenient for you. And 12 o'clock Eastern time is different in other time zones. We thank God for you no matter where you are from. Amen. Uh, so today we're looking at the book of Second Corinthians. We're going to go ahead and read the uh, message, the, uh, the passage for today. And I'll uh, do a little bit of explanation at the end. Amen. So Paul says, this is the third time I am coming to you. Every charge must be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. Uh, I warn those who sinned before and all the others, and I warn them now while absent, as I did when present on my second visit, that if I come again, I will not spare them. Since you see proof that Christ is speaking in me, he is not weak in dealing with you, but is powerful among you. For he was crucified in weakness, but lives by the power of God. For we also are weak in him, but in dealing with you, we will live with him by the power of God. Examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Or do you not realize this about yourselves, that Jesus Christ is in you, unless indeed you fail to meet the test? I hope you will find out that we have not failed the test. But we pray to God that you may not do wrong, not that we may appear to have met the test, but that you may do what is right, though we may seem to have failed. For we cannot do anything against the truth, but only for the truth. For we are glad when we are weak and you are strong. Your restoration is what we pray for. For this reason, I write these things while I am away from you. That when I come, I may not have to be severe in my use of the authority that the Lord has given me for building up and not for tearing down. Finally, brothers, rejoice. Aim for restoration. Comfort one another. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Um, so so Paul is is wrapping up uh, this letter by concluding he has been dealing with in the last half of the book about vindicating his apostleship, about the uh, the church needing to be careful about. Uh, who they allow to come in and who they follow after because they were going after these super apostles. And so he's wrapping it up now and saying, look, um, I'm trying to be as nice as possible to you. Uh, but if I come again, um, I'm going to have to be as stern. And so he's warning those who are sinners. And if you know, the first book of Corinthians, as well as the leading part of the second book of Corinthians dealt with a lot of the issues that was going on in the church that brought about division and not edification. And so he had to deal with that sternly, and then it brought sorrow. And yet, even during that sorrow, of course, uh, these super apostles were coming in to talk about how great they were and that Paul was a suffering person. And, and y'all know, we see it today in today's church, how folk will flock after those that appear to be successful and have the look and all these things. 
um, but the ones that are laboring in the truth of God and sincere uh, care for the life of those that they teach and may struggle and may not have the appearance of success according to the culture of today uh, uh, struggle to even get the attention and not that it's for attention but get the um, uh, the mind of people and the heart of people uh, to follow uh, and so he's dealing with that and wrapping it up saying that I'm going to come to you if I come to you I pray that things are set in order so that I don't have to be stern because God's word is stern but he starts it off in the first verse he's talking about let everything uh, and the King James would say the mouth of two or three witnesses let every word be established um, I use that in, in, and that's something that I uh, have a mindset for when dealing with the doctrine of the Bible is that things should be uh, are, should unite it, it's not going to just say it in one place but it's going to have uh, some other place in the word of God where to be uh, backed up and so uh, two or three witnesses and then in, uh, the word he uses as a multiple attestation it is attested to multiple times in the word of God so your baptismal doctrine the words you say the infilling of the Holy Ghost the, the, the conduct the demeanor the things that you come up with can you find it being witnessed to not just one scripture but multiple scriptures but but um but in this case, Paul is talking about the things that are brought against one another, the things that are brought against him. Let it be done uh, by two or three witnesses. Don't just believe the word of one. Don't allow one super apostle to come in and, and levy accusations without there being witnesses in that case. Um, the word also says to even witness to that uh, uh, at the uh, multiple councils. Uh, the word of multiple councils there is safety. Uh, and so you have to understand that you need to have that duplicity in order to be able to establish foundational truths. And so he goes on to talk about he's warning those who are sinning, warning those who are um, are offline. He says, when I come to you again, I will uh, come and will not spare them. He says, I'm going to. Uh, Christ used sternness and used, and uh, he wasn't going to back off. He wasn't going to be weak. He 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 suffered in weakness, but he reigned in power. Uh, and so he was saying, when I come again, I'm gonna have to come and bring the word. When a, when a man of God has a word on his shoulders to carry uh, to people, if he doesn't, as it says in the book of Ezekiel, he doesn't levy the truth upon the people. It would be brought to his charge. So his his whole command is to tell the truth even to free himself, even if the others that do not receive it are lost. So he says, when I'm coming again, I'm coming the same way I came before to speak against the things that are not of God. And so uh, he's warning them of this. And he says, um, I hope you haven't failed the test. I hope when I come, I can come in a nice manner. I can come uh, where we can uh, fellowship in uh, unity of, of joy or joy for unity. Uh, not a unity of correction um but he's hoping that they do the thing that is right because we have to deal with the truth um and so he's he's talking about his love for them he only wants the best for them he only wants the things that build up and not tear down uh that's what his desire is but a lot of times you can't build and you know the scripture says take care of how you build on the foundation the foundation has been laid Paul is making sure that what's built upon it is uh, proper by the word of God. And so we have to understand that that is the case. And so uh, uh, he wants he wants that thing uh, to be uh, proper uh, in the eyes of the Lord. And so uh, he's concluding his letters, as he always does, to give final greetings uh, and admonitions uh, admonitions to uh, the people and uh, giving them a peaceable greeting to end the scripture and if you read uh, King James or I got a Thompson Chain uh, reference Bible King James version that uh, talks about how the letter is written I want to speak to that because I heard one preacher use that as a reason to discredit the New Testament but 
It's not the case. Uh, they say Paul didn't write Second Corinthians. You got to understand, Paul had people working with him. He didn't travel alone. And so he dictated a lot of these letters to Titus and Timothy and others that were around him. You can even see in one of the earliest passages of scripture he says see how long of a letter i write with my own hand um and so what he's saying is that a lot of other times i dictate it i don't write as long as when i'm sitting here going through my thoughts and i, I flesh them out a little bit further than i do before just wanted to drop that nugget of information just because it says somebody else wrote it doesn't mean that paul didn't author it he dictated it to some people and so this letter was a personal letter to the church at corinth um, that uh, preceded his return uh, visit to them uh, to further admonish them, to further encourage them, to further lift them up. And so uh, understand that, that a pastor, a leader, an establishmentarian, whatever you want to call it, cares for the flock and he cares for how people grow. No matter how large, Paul had large churches, small churches, uh, everything, churches that suffered, churches that thrived, churches that gave, churches that were stingy. He dealt with them all. Uh, and so, uh, but he loved them all and he traveled to them all and he sent help to them all and he united them all in, in fellowship and doctrine. And, and, and it was a thing that caused the word of God to spread. And we are recipients of that today. Amen. So I just want to thank you for being with us thus far. We're looking forward to the next opportunity. I think we'll be in the book of uh, Philemon or Philemon. Uh, I'll get that right. I think we'll be in the book of Philemon. We'll look at Philippians and head to Romans. Uh, it depends on who you who you subscribe to as the correct chronological order of the letters. But whether we got it right or not, we can see how uh, Paul's writings uh, are and uh, we can understand uh, what he uh, has for us and so these next group uh, some put Romans I've seen it both ways Romans then Philemon but we'll go ahead and do Philemon and then we'll go back then you get to the pastoral uh, epistles Colossians Ephesians Philippians after we get get done with those two and so um, looking forward uh, to moving on. We'll be in Philemon come our next opportunity. Amen. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you is my prayer. Please connect with us. Please, if you want to support our ministry, you can support it. Uh, all the information is at the bottom of our screen. Amen. If you need more information, go to our website, triumphministers.com. It'll point you to our social media platforms as well as how you can uh, support or even our address at the bottom of the screen. You can mail us there or either join us in fellowship. Amen. God bless you in Jesus name.